Today we're going to talk about how to create elements inside HTML. And you may be thinking, well, Daniel, we already talked about elements. What are you talking about? We have them right there. And you talked about them like two episodes ago. But we do have a couple more things that I want to discuss when it comes to elements, such as attributes and how pages are in general structured when it comes to making a website. Since a lot of people have a hard time getting into the, the mindset of how to think when you put together a page using HTML and CSS. So in the first video in this course here, we talked a bit about HTML elements and the fact that when we have a opening and a closing body tag, like the one that we have here, then this is called an element. So we have, you know, an element consists of two different things, opening, closing, and then you can put stuff in between them. But we haven't talked about something called a empty HTML tag. And essentially what that is, and you may have noticed this already, because in the first video, when we set up this document here, you may have noticed that a couple of the HTML elements don't have a closing tag. So for example, the meta tags that we have here, they don't have a closing tag. The link that we created in the last video doesn't have a closing tag either. So in some cases, when it comes to specific elements, we call these empty elements and they don't need to have a closing tag or actually they don't have a closing tag. Now you may be asking, well, okay, so Daniel, how do we distinguish which elements needs a closing tag and which one doesn't. Essentially, this is just something that you will learn along the way uh, when you start creating websites over and over and over again, because, you know, with any sort of skill, when you start repeating things, they just kind of like start to stick over time. So it's just important to, to note here that some of these elements don't need to have a closing tag. But now we did also do something else in the last couple of videos because we did also do something with attributes. And when it comes to some of these HTML elements, we do have something called an attribute. Essentially, whenever we have a tag, like let's for example, take the link to our style sheet. Whenever we have a HTML element like this one right here, it may also require a couple of attributes in order to know exactly what this element is supposed to be. So right now we're saying, okay, well, we want to create a link because this is a link HTML element, but we haven't told it what specifically we're trying to link to. So if we just include the link here without all this information, then, you know, it doesn't really know what to do with it because, you know, okay, what are you trying to link to here? So in this case, it would do require to have two different attributes to give this HTML element a little bit of information to know specifically what it needs to do. So in this case here, we have a style sheet type and then we have a path to the particular file that we want to link to. Now, some attributes are optional in some cases and some are required in order for things to work properly, like for example, with the link example here, uh, but not all elements do have attributes. For example, we can't just take a body here and just like, that'll be fine. We don't need to do anything, uh, but we can also add something later on in order to properly style it using CSS once we do get to start styling things and make things look pretty inside our website. But for now, just know that we have these things that we can attach inside elements and they're called attributes. So right now we have a little bit of a startup HTML to kind of get our page going, just so we have a little bit to start with here. Now, when it comes to actually creating a website, usually the way we do it is by putting the visible, visible, the, the visible elements inside the body tag and then we start creating content in here. And whenever we create any sort of content, we need to tell the browser what kind of content is it. And we usually do that with more HTML tags. So we do have many different HTML tags that we use for different purposes. Now, in a lot of cases, there's not really a wrong or right way to do things. And you may be thinking, oh, okay, so now I need to like memorize a hundred different tags. You don't really need to do that because in a lot of cases, it doesn't really matter what kind of tag you're using. It's more for, we have something called semantics when it comes to creating HTML. And now we're getting into a little bit of a deeper water uh, when we talk about semantics, because semantics basically mean that we are describing things inside our website. So the browser knows what exactly the content is, you know, in order to make it easier for you to pop up on Google if people try to search for something that may be found on your website. So let's not go into semantics. That is, the, that's a different subject. That is probably a whole different course in itself. Um, but let's go ahead and talk a bit about the different elements that you would typically see inside when it comes to like, you know, structuring a website. So now to begin with here, as you may have seen, we do have a head tag that has information that we don't see on the website. This is just information we give the browser. And then we do also have a body tag down here, which is content we do actually see. I know I, I repeat myself a couple of times, but repetition makes it easier to remember things. So the way you need to think about it is that whenever you see anything inside a website, 
it's placed inside boxes. And whenever you start building websites on your own and you see other websites on the internet, you're gonna start recognizing these different boxes I'm talking about. Uh, just to give an example here, if I were to take my channel page inside YouTube, you can actually see that, okay, if we take a look at this, you can see we have a box at the top here, which is essentially the navigation. We do also have a box on the side here, which contains a site menu. We do also have a box here, which contains a banner and it has some information inside of it. Then we have a box down here that has information that also has a box inside of it with more information. And then we have another box within that box that's inside the box down here that has a navigation. So it's boxes within boxes when it comes to making websites. And it's, it's really important that you start realizing early on that whenever you structure anything using websites, everything is inside boxes. So with that in mind, when we go inside our body tag, which is by the way, a box, because this is a container that has something inside of it, we can also create more boxes that describe content within those boxes. I know I'm starting to, to sound really confusing right now, but let's just go ahead and do it and then it'll make sense. Right now, inside a website, uh, let's go back to the YouTube example. At the very top of the website, we have what is called a header. And a header is typically a box of content that repeats itself at the top of the website every single page you visit inside whatever website. So if I were to go to another page inside YouTube, we're still going to see the same menu at the very top of the website. And because of this, this is what we categorize as a header. And then we have another box down here to provide some information such as links or subscription buttons and stuff like that. And then we have another box that has a different purpose. So depending on what purpose the boxes have, we have different HTML elements that describe those particular types of content. So let's go back inside our editor and say I want to create a header, which is the top part of my website that has a menu and you know some, some links and maybe my logo or something. We call that a header. And again, because this is a very awesome piece of software, we can just write header, tap, and then you can see we get these header tags. So with this header element, we can actually go ahead and provide information inside these two tags in order to create this uh, navigation at the top of the website that has information that we see in all pages. Uh, so we can just go ahead and go down to the next line and then we start creating content inside this box here. So let's say below the header, I want to create a banner just like inside my YouTube channel page. What I could do is I could go beneath my header here and do keep in mind, it is a very good idea to organize things properly inside your HTML. So whenever you have something that is nested inside something, which is for example, the header is inside the body tag, then we just kind of like click tap on the keyboard to shift it out or hold down shift and then tap to shift it back in. So we can like structure things so it's easier for us as the developer to see what exactly is going on inside our website. So beneath my header, I could go ahead and say, well, I want to create a section. So we're gonna say we have a section here, which means that we have a section of content that is related to the main content of the website. And then you can just put content inside the section tag in order to build your banner. So that could, for example, be an image. And I know I'm skipping a little bit ahead here, but if I were to create a image HTML tag, then we can actually link to an image and we can also create a description for the image inside the alt attribute here, just so Google knows what exactly is inside the image. Uh, so we can put content inside this box here in order to you know, take up some space underneath our menu at the top of the website. And as you can see below the banner, we do have another box that has a bunch of menus inside of it. So, okay, so what can we do here? We can go back inside and beneath the section tag, we can create a navigation tag, which is in order to define that, okay, so within this box here, we have a bunch of navigations like menus and stuff like that and links that needs to take the user somewhere inside the website. So in this kind of way, things are built up using boxes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna give you some examples of some very useful boxes or elements that we use inside our website in order to put content inside boxes. Now I'm only going to be showing you the most essential ones that we use most frequently when it comes to building websites, but I do have a link in the description that you can check out where we have a lot of different elements that you can take a look at 
if you want to be better at creating semantics for your website. So if you want to better describe the content to make it easier to find on Google, then you're more than welcome to check out the link and just kind of decide for yourself which elements you want to use inside your website. It's very important for me to point out, you're basically just naming content and the sections of content that you have inside your website using these different elements here. So it's not something that will break your website in any sort of way. You just need to give your content the proper description that you think is the most fitting for that particular piece of content. So to begin with here, we do have a header tag, which I did already show you where we have, you know, some header information. Typically that goes at the top of a piece of content to show that, okay, so this is the top part of, for example, the page that you're inside of with the navigation and a logo and, you know, maybe your social media links or something. Uh, we do also have one called a footer. And a footer is typically what goes at the bottom of the website. So if you have some extra information that needs to go at the bottom of the website, you can put that in there, for example, contact information or uh, maybe a site map for the entire website so people can easily navigate around by going to the bottom and seeing all the different pages inside the website. There's a lot of different things you can do using a footer and it's basically up to you what you want to put up information inside the footer. And then of course we do have the section tag, which is very popularly used when it comes to creating just sections of content that is relevant to this particular page that we're inside of. We do also have one called a article. And a article is basically when you have a bunch of content that is kind of grouped together. This could, for example, be if you have a blog or something inside your website and you want to show this inside your front page, then you could put like a little box inside your front page with, you know, articles and, and different things that are related to each other. So basically content that's grouped together, but isn't necessarily directly related to the main content of the web page. And then we do also have something called a side, which is a tag that we use in order to place in content that isn't really related to the web page in any sort of way. And it's just kind of like a side feature, a good example for this. If I were to go back inside YouTube here, you can actually see that if I were to click this uh, button over here on the left side, then it opens up a small a window that has a bunch of information that is just kind of like relevant for shortcuts or something like that, but it's not directly relevant to whatever content is inside the page I'm inside right now. So whenever you have any kind of like side information that could just be like an additional feature, then you can place that inside a aside section. Now we did also talk about nav, which is a navigation. So whenever you have some part of the website that just kind of like has a navigation inside of it, and this can be anything from a single menu or many different menus that are inside one container, then we use the one called a nav. And now probably one of the more important HTML elements that you need to know about is the one called main. And main is basically the container that is going to contain the main content of this particular page that the user is inside of. And I do want to point out that, yes, we did also talk about something called a section, but the difference between the main and the section is that the main is going to contain the main content that the user is going to visit that particular page for, whereas the section is also content related to that specific page, but less important than the main content that the user is coming in for. And you might be asking, why is this important? Well, again, semantics. Lastly, we do have another tag, and this one is very dangerous to show you because a lot of people in the past, before we got HTML5, because do keep in mind, I did mention in the first video that we had something called HTML5 that came out back in, in 2012, 11 or something. I'm not quite sure. It was like back when I started studying multimedia design. Essentially all these different tags here that are very semantic because they describe the content very well are part of what you call HTML5. And in the past, before we had these, we had to use something called a div tag. And a div tag looks like this. So we just say div and then you have a opening and closing tag. Now a div tag describes absolutely nothing inside your website. And usually we use a div tag in order to just kind of like structure things a little bit better. So let's say I go inside my header here, then I can use a div tag in order to take many different small pieces of content inside my header to group them together, but without describing them because maybe there's no need to. And then I can move them around easier using CSS because they're inside a box now. Uh, but be careful when it comes to divs because I see a lot of people that make websites and instead of creating a header tag for the header part of their website, instead of creating a main tag for the main content, instead of creating a footer tag for the, the footer part of the website, they just use div tags all the way. 
<laughs> which doesn't, like I said, it, it doesn't break the website in any sort of way, it will still work. But remember, whenever you describe your content, it becomes easier for Google and other search engines to know exactly what is inside your website. So use the div tag sparingly, you know, when there's an absolute need to, you know, maybe to group content that, you know, just need to be structured differently using CSS, you know, so you can move them around independently. Uh, but don't use it whenever you want to create like main content inside the, the web page. So having you shown these different elements, your brain is probably starting to fry because these are a lot of information, you know, all at one time. And I just want to point out here that no one is expecting you to memorize all of these in the first watch. Like this is something that comes with practice. So don't worry too much about it if you can't remember all of these when you close down the video again, because no one remembers this in the first try. Like it usually just comes with practice. So just keep practicing. And the more you use them, the more they're going to stick to you. The last thing I want to mention for this video here is that we did talk about these different elements here, but I, I just want to point out that you can also put these inside each other. So if I, for example, have my header at the top of my website, but I have a navigation inside the header, then I can take the nav tags and inside the header tag here, I can go ahead and just paste them in. So different elements can go within different elements. Just make sure that if you put some element inside another element, that you do have the opening and closing tag. Otherwise, you can mess up the structure of your website. So make sure that you do have a opening tag and a closing tag for all the different elements that you're using. And with this, I have pretty much talked about everything that I want to show in this video here because I don't want to fry your brain too much. Um, so let's go ahead and end it here and just kind of like if you need to refresh whatever I talked about, of course, you can go ahead and just rewatch the video or maybe just like save it at the top of your, you know, your bookmarks or something so you can easily find this video later on. Uh, but just know that these are like the main ones that you need to know about. If you know these, you're pretty much good to go. Like you don't need to remember many more than this. So you can pretty much just like take these and then build a complete website. Like these are the ones that are like required. Again, I do this because you could technically just take the div element and just build up your entire website using div elements. And of course, you're going to ruin your semantics completely, but it would technically still work and the website would look the exact same way as if you build it using all these other elements that we have in here. But now you know a little bit about semantics and why it's important to be found on Google, because if you can't be found on Google, then you know, no one is going to see your website. So uh, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. At the end here, I'd love to say thank you to all the different patrons and YouTube members who is actually supporting the channel, as well as a special thanks to Kelly Corve, who's actually sponsoring the channel for the month. So thank you so much. Uh, the channel wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all the different members. So thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time.